Hi. Good morning. Nice of you to join in. Hi, Mida. I hope today you're able to see me. Hello? No, I think there's something up. I might just have to restart all of Instagram, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> all right. Um, so thank you for joining us on this Sunday morning. Uh, it was such a lovely conversation that we had uh, last week about uh, the preconception phase and, uh, you know, the different uh, learnings from that phase. And uh, for all of you uh, that, that, that have joined in today, in case you haven't checked it out, please go check out that story, that live um, um, conversation that we had with Pragya. And it is a very, very heartful, very uh, wonderful way to look at everything and understand what um, you can learn from yoga, from just being open to this entire journey. Even though there are hiccups, even though there are challenges, even though there are ups and downs, how do you actually go through it? And what, what are the learnings, basically? Right. So I think it was a very nice conversation. So I'm very, very excited to take this forward into the pregnancy phase, because uh, with all the things that you shared with us last week, I'm so curious to know how your pregnancy journey has been so far. So, uh, you know, take us through it. Over to you. So the pregnancy, uh, the pregnancy itself has been very nice, like very comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, I have been active throughout my pregnancy mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it, it's it's been like, I think, comparatively, like easier than it it is for a, for a lot of people. Um, although in like in the first trimester, I had nausea all the time, um, you know, and uh, I had like food aversions, but like I wasn't throwing up. I uh, I, I was active, like I wasn't asked to, um, you know, uh, be on bed rest or anything like that. Uh, structurally, like physically, I was fine. Um, you know, I, I don't remember catching any colds or anything like that in the first trimester, which would, uh, you know, sort of uh, put me in conflict with like medications and things like that. I haven't been medicated, uh, you know, for pregnant. I've slept really well. So um, all in all, it's been it's it's been a really nice uh, time. I think like I would describe my pregnancy as healthful. And um, and right now I'm in my third trimester, like it's just started, like it started at the beginning of this week. Um, and uh, so even, even my second trimester, you know, like your hormones start to even out in the second trimester. So the second trimester also, uh, I was able to, in fact, um, work out even more regularly, like practice yoga even more regularly. I was more energetic also, which is what happens. It's, I mean, it's usually expected that your second trimester will be more, you, you'll feel a lot more energetic. But I think um, what, what for me has really characterized th this entire pregnancy journey is like the idea that it, it, was healthful it you know i i never felt like um uh like low on energy and i i've i've enjoyed it from day one so that that's pretty much been been what it, it's it's like for me how wonderful so um just a just a curious question here did you know i mean did you feel that you were pregnant like very early on or did the symptoms start a little later mm -hmm. So I think, um, I, you know, like I write uh, about this also in my blog. I just recently published a blog about this that I think I conceived when I was dancing uh, with my teacher in Nagpur. I'd gone for a dance camp uh, with her. And I think uh, there, like towards the end, I was there about four or five days. And towards the end, uh, I started to feel a little um, uh, like a kind of like t a little tired. And like my head would spin a little bit, but then I said, okay, maybe that's just because, um, you know, because I was dancing all day, like 12 hours a day, we were just dancing. So I thought, you know, maybe it's because of that. So, um, so I, I don't think like I really felt anything, but yes, after uh, we went to the doctor to confirm the pregnancy, uh, I, I don't know whether it was psychological or whether that's, you know, whether you do get the symptoms in the fifth week of pregnancy, um, but that's, I think that's when the symptoms started where, uh, and, and again, you know, it wasn't like I started vomiting and stuff like that, or that I was just fatigued. It wasn't like that for me. It was like very gradual. It was like my body was strong enough to handle those symptoms. So it began with me, uh, not liking the taste of, of things that I, I like, like for instance, coffee is something that I have every day. So I remember um, we, you know, like I would have my coffee in the morning and I'd be like, okay, this tastes kind of weird. 
you know so um i think that's what happened for me and if i also feel that you know perhaps if i had not been so aware of like my taste buds like you know as yoga teachers practitioners we're always very uh, we're like alert all the time like uh, very alert to like our surroundings what we're tasting what we're smelling hearing and everything so i think you know the, the reason maybe that i could feel something like a, a slight shift in taste or smell like my sense of smell um was might have just been because of that because you know we are vigilant as as yoga practitioners um and maybe if i hadn't been so vigilant and uh, you know we had so um like in touch with my senses then maybe i wouldn't even have noticed that so yeah, yeah. so how has uh, your your yoga journey been during the pregnancy did you uh, you know typically doctors say the first trimester is generally not recommended especially i mean of course for you that wouldn't be the case because you have practiced yoga for a very long time but for a lot of people people say that you know first trimester is the most crucial uh, you know the body is uh, adapting yeah. to this new journey and it's good to just walk and do nothing else but mm. did you follow that was it different what did you do well um you know i had looked to yoga during my journey of you know conceiving also you know um and uh, it was like my teachers had given me specific routines for conception so uh-huh. as soon as i found out that i you know i had conceived i went back to my teachers again and they gave me a routine for the first trimester now in the first trimester um from the yogic point of view we do work on um relaxing the body uh, we don't want because the pregnancy is unstable i mean even scientifically like the you know the pregnancy is very unstable in the first trimester it takes a little while for, at least 3 months for the pregnancy to like really establish itself so i i uh, so it, you know with yoga it is it's just that it's like uh, you know every like the routines that i was given the sequences i was given they were basically to promote the uh, uh, to promote uh, the pregnancy you know like a long like a, a, a stable and healthy pregnancy so i um, uh, i know there's always a tendency for especially for those of us who are used to working out every day um and you know intense workouts and like i have a background where you know i used to be overweight and through working out and and you know like controlling my diet i actually lost a lot of weight so for me uh working out is like an integral part of my life and um not being able to do that initially like when i was trying to conceive initially it was very challenging but then when i understood why the sequences are there i understood like the the uh, thought process that goes behind you know uh, having your body relax trying to change change the hormonal balance of the body trying to keep cortisol levels down when i understood that then i think uh, i was able to really uh kind of relax and and sink into the sequences so um it, it that's how it was for me also initially like my my sequences like the yoga that i was doing was not um very challenging i did not do any of the advanced asanas the focus was just on relaxing the mind and relaxing the body to promote um a stable pregnancy and i was on board with that so i didn't try to play around with that and i don't suggest that also i think the first 3 months uh, y- your body is going through so many changes um that i feel that if if i had been um uh, too focused uh, on uh, just you know getting my workout in for the day or focused on eating the way i felt is is uh in that that i used to eat before because see my taste buds also changed so i wasn't eating the same way you know so i feel that if i had been um too fixated on on working out as usual or eating as i used to then i wouldn't really have been able to like enjoy my pregnancy you know the first 3 months also uh, i think in a way i learned how to let go of of that hyper uh need, hyperactive activity that i i perhaps you know i i was how i was uh it it really did teach me to like let things go slow down and uh, just just be uh, aware of the changes and appreciative you know of the change that's happening in my body yeah so could you tell us a little bit more about you know i mean you said that it was designed to promote a healthy pregnancy yeah. right so what does that mean like for for the yoga teachers of tuned in and for the you know practitioners who are going through the first trimester could you give us like an idea of what 
what kind of practice promotes mm. a healthy pregnancy i know we're going to deal with this later in one of the other uh, uh, you know lives that we do but just just as a like a a, a broad general idea yeah so um we so immediately you know as uh, uh, whenever a woman wants to conceive and and whenever she does actually conceive uh, we always as yoga teachers we think about the uh, the pelvic cavity we think about the abdominal the uterus cavity as well so what we try to do is we try to expand that area so that you know the the implantation can occur and um you know the the feet the growing fetus can have enough space and uh you know too much compression in that area shouldn't happen because that can cause distress to the fetus of course in yoga we don't talk about it only on the physical terms we also talk about the uh, the spiritual growth of the of the fetus of the baby you know uh, so we we always think about sequences from that point of view so um, not only was i doing uh, asanas which required me to like uh, lie down relax like a lot of supine asanas like supta bhadra konasana uh, supta virasana all of these supported with props like a lot of bolsters under me so we weren't focusing so much on like flexibility i wasn't focusing on building strength but we were just focusing on uh, giving a uh, creating enough space in the pelvis so that the uterus has enough space to just be and to relax uh we don't want too many contractions happening in the uterus so um uh, like twisting uh, you know twisting is not allowed like intense twisting is not allowed open twists are okay but like close twisting where you're twisting um towards your leg because again you know that compresses the the abdominal cavity we we don't want to do that so um a lot of the uh, you know a lot of the, like all of the sequences basically that i followed uh were following these guidelines you know so starting with a lot of supine asanas trying to get your mind and body uh, you'd be surprised you know like i i i before this i've never spent so much time just lying down uh, with my legs in various um, positions um and you know now i was doing that for like half an hour in every single class and i found that what that did was actually help me in calming down the body because eventually if you have to stay in a particular posture uh there's there's no other go you know your your mind eventually will calm down all the thoughts will eventually calm down uh so that's what was happening you know so we were working from from that angle also from the mind angle also calming down the mind at the same time keeping the pelvis open uh ensuring that the uterus has enough space to grow um ensuring like in in the second trimester that there's no distress being caused to the fetus by too much movement um you know and also we were doing a lot of inversions because inversions like again give a lot of space you know in the pelvis inversions with like uh, in bhadra konasana uh, shirshasana with bhadra konasana legs um sarvangasana with wide legs all of that uh, you know were, were sequences which were given to me asanas which were given to me so i'd say it was pretty much like it was very similar to i mean these are just the same yoga asanas but how you do them changed you know so and i was i was very strict about that like if i i i practiced them focus on what what mm -hmm. yeah what and you focus on how much time you spend and what the goal is like if you have the idea of the intention behind you know holding an asana for that long that maybe you will eventually get into that experience yeah. even if there are lots of things that happen early on like you get distracted yeah. distracted you get restless you just want to get out of it but then if you just stick to it then slowly things start to slow yes yeah, yeah. and that was my experience yes okay all right so a lot of people also ask me because you know you, uh, everybody talks about how yoga is a holistic practice right it's not just it's not just about the body there is a very very strong element of the breath and more importantly everybody is saying that yoga is about tuning your mind and you know making sure that, that your mind is open to experiences and perspectives now a lot of people ask me uh, you know about pranayama during pregnancy and mm -hmm. meditation during pregnancy what what yes. is your take on it did you do any of those how did it help yes so um from the beginning uh, my teachers focused on opening up the diaphragm also so you know it's it's not just like the uterus that we want to expand uh, because the uterus will will grow like the baby will grow upwards your diaphragm will get compressed and that will make it more difficult for you to breathe so that's one aspect another thing is that if you don't have good posture and and your shoulders sort of flop forward and your diaphragm and rib cage sort of bend forward then again that causes stress 
on the baby, you know, on the on the uterus. So it compresses the uterus. So from the beginning, we were very um, clear that in every single asana, the chest has to remain lifted. The, the diaphragm, the sternum, ha they all of these have to remain lifted to promote better breathing. And uh, when I was in the supine asanas, um, again, I was supposed to be focusing on my breath, long inhalations, long exhalations. Um, we did not practice any uh, vigorous pranayam. Uh, all the pranayam was meant just to get the mind and body in the uh, mind and breath and body in in sync. You know, so so pranayam was there from the beginning, but again, it was not very intense pranayam. It was um, uh, breath work, which was more designed more to relax the body, um, and like not uh, not sort of put me in a state of distress if I wasn't able to to keep the counting or um, or you know the the diaphragm like flapping too hard or the lungs flapping too hard. So again, it was like very gentle pranayam, but every single. Uh, I was doing it every single day um, and for long periods of time because I was in supine asanas for like half an hour every day. Um, so, you know, we were focusing on that like every day. So, yes, I practiced a lot of pranayama as well. Wonderful, wonderful. So I, I've also noticed as a, as a person who teaches a lot of prenatal women, I, I've noticed that, you know, um, this is a time where visualization and generally uh, imagery is quite potent uh, uh, in terms of, you know, calming the body, calming the mind. And I noticed that it also has an effect on um, breath and, you know, generally the ease of being. So did you do any meditations, any any specific ones, um, anything that helped you? Or did you do anything which is not like a meditation practice? Or did you lean into philosophy of yoga? You know, how did how did you address the mind and the mental considerations because you know it's a time of a lot of anxiety there's equal excitement and there's equal anxiety there are so many things involved with pregnancy so uh could you tell us what you did yeah so so um my uh vedanta teacher so i've been studying vedanta for about the last five years since both of us were in s vyasa and we met subhadra ma'am so i've been i've been you know studying with her since then and um, I remember having a very candid conversation with her uh, about my conception journey also. And uh, she was uh, she was so happy when I conceived. Um, and even when you know I was I was trying to conceive, was not happening. Um, she, you know, she she would uh, always kind sometimes you know like uh, interpret the text that we were studying. We were studying the Gita at that time. She would interpret the texts. Uh, so that they would make more sense to me, um, so that I could I could read something in the text which would help me. I could make the text more relevant for me. So I think Vedanta, like the study of Vedanta, really helped because um, you know repeatedly, you know the point that you're supposed to make uh, to make uh, to make an effort but not be attached to the fruits of the effort. All of that, you know, is is constantly reinforced. And I think uh, just you know having uh, those classes with her four times a week. Um, just just to be able to listen to that philosophy, it, it really helped me um, in my journey to conception. Um, and once I had conceived, um, then I, I noticed that all of a sudden, uh, you know, all of the texts had more like mother child references, <laughs> examples. And yeah, and, and it was very sweet. I mean, she, she never said like she's doing it specifically for me. But uh, even just this morning, she uh, we were studying the Katha Upanis Upanishad. And uh, she was, you know, it was just like the mother child um, references again, how to raise a child, um, all of that, you know, like, so, so she really made an effort to make it um, more, more applicable and relevant to me. So that I could get something from that, from the journey that I was going through, you know, so that I, so that I, I could actually feel that Vedanta is like a way of life, and it's not just something in the textbooks and stuff. Um, and and I, I'm really, uh, you know, glad of that and appreciative of that. Also, she did ask me to start chanting a lot more, um, because you know, again, when we think about pregnancy from like the Eastern point of view, from the yoga and Vedanta point of view, we think not only of the physical growth of the baby, but we're also thinking about like the, uh, you know, the ears starting to work, the mind starting to work. So, you know, she was very uh, particular. She said, uh, you know, you should try to chant every day, a little bit every day. Uh, it's good for the baby. It's good for you. I, I found that that chanting also really helped me. So the entire process of Garbha Samskara, 
right to culture the the baby not just physically through all the medicine and the food and everything that you're eating and doing but also think of the baby as an entire being of the mind energy as well as the body and saying okay yeah. as a mother i'm going to be doing this this and this so that the baby has a development overall yeah and and you know it's it's in the modern terms that we think about garbh samskar like it's it, it you know as a separate uh, practice mm-hmm. but if if you are in touch with yoga teachers if you're in touch with vedanta teachers even like ayurvedic practitioners these are th- things which are natural you know they don't they don't like sort of um, class them under like a separate category that you have to specifically do these teachers like especially senior teachers they'll they'll give you you know tidbits of advice and and it'll automatically put you uh you know give you that garb samskar it it it's not something separate like separate for us like it's i never integrated. had to really register for a course it's integrated yes yeah so it, it doesn't feel like you have to do something specifically for it it's just yeah. small things that you do that sort of have this overall experience yeah yeah and again i mean that i can't be more grateful for that because i feel that it's a very natural thing that's happening i know a lot of uh, other women you know who are pregnant and uh, they have to sort of um you know uh, look for courses for garb samskar and there's so many things on the in, on on instagram also that i've seen ads that i've seen but i i sort of i i feel grateful that you know for me it's all been a very integrated approach um just because of the blessings of the teachers and you know like the yoga community that i am a part of yeah that's wonderful maybe uh, you know you you do a lot more uh, videos or you know share it with the rest of the world in a different way when you have the time of course i know you're yeah. extraordinarily busy as well but that would be something that i'm sure would help a lot of people because i think that right now Uh, we've moved i mean we've moved into a space where everything is scheduled and there's a calendar and then there is a a specific time yeah. where this there's so much focus on these things but just just the 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 entire quality of life you know just doing it as something that you normally do just like you know you have food you do this and you do practice and you know you have that holistic sense of life which is so important i think yes. so uh, maybe maybe you know we would love to hear it and this is something that we can think about a little bit yeah more, right well be nice yes so uh, the next question that i have is that during your entire conception journey um you reached out to a lot of these alternate health practices right you mm-hmm. you did acupressure uh, acupuncture right i'm so sorry mm-hmm. and uh, you did uh, i mean a whole bunch of things pranic healing yes. and things like that so did you continue that or did you feel like uh, you know you wanted to focus on some and drop the others how did that go um i uh, a lot of the things i just kept doing like for instance um uh so for pranic healing specifically my pranic healer told me that you know i don't have to continue the session so they also uh, in pranic healing also uh, you know they have certain uh, certain number of sessions that they prescribe what they want to work on on you and depending on the state of your chakras so um for uh for pranic healing my t- i i did what my teacher what my guide uh, pranic healer uh, told me to do which was um, i think the first 3 uh uh the first trimester so the first 3 months we were you know when i was trying to uh, uh, trying to ascertain that it is indeed a stable pregnancy we kept the sessions going um and it really did help me um you know uh, she she was telling she said that it, there's no need for me to continue post uh you know post the uh, implantation phase but um i found that you know the, the pranic healing was also relaxing me i found it very useful um on all levels you know even on a physical level so i i continued that with her for the first 3 months and after that she said you really don't need to you know because it is time consuming as well so she said you know you can find um you can do a, a meditation on your own you can do breathing on your own but you don't really have to have this time you don't have to dedicate this time uh, with me um so i took her advice um acupuncture is something that uh, that i started in the second trimester acupuncture is good like once a week or twice a week i have time on the weekends um so sometimes i drop in on the weekends to get acupuncture done um with all of these um uh, practices also though uh, i would say that these are the you know because i dabbled in them 
before I, I got pregnant also. And because uh, like I did a lot of my own research and I found the right practitioners, like good practitioners. Um, so I would, you know, always recommend that if somebody wants to do it, these are great things, great supportive um, uh, practices for your pregnancy. They promote a healthy pregnancy, but only if you're able to find uh, the right practitioners, just like a good yoga teacher is important, like the right te yoga teacher and a good yoga teacher. Similarly, you have to go to the right acupuncturist. You have to go to the right pranic healer. All of this is related to energy, you know, so um, so there, there's a certain amount of like your gut instinct that you have to use. And, you know, it's it's not easy to find uh, good practitioners for these practices as well so i would i i did continue uh you know uh, like the acupuncture and the pranic healing in the first trimester but only because i had like a you know great healers uh working that i was working with so uh, so uh yeah um, now it's yeah like i'm sure that you know it took some time for you to find somebody that you resonate yes. with right because healing is such a personal journey that you really need to see like you you can have a lot of amazing healers but you may not resonate yeah. with them right and uh since it's such a personal journey i'm sure you went through a process of trial and error and and you kept your mind open and until you find somebody that that worked for you yes right so could you tell us a little bit more because i think that a lot of people get get stuck on this in this uh you know topic yes uh on this topic so yes. uh, like how do you know that that somebody is um uh somebody you resonate with so from from, from the beginning of my journey um and i have written about this and even spoken about it in, on my youtube videos i have been very vocal about you know whatever i have been feeling you know so um and and a large part of that did come with um, knowing how I was feeling. And again, that's because of the yoga, you know, because I was in touch with with what I was feeling, because I, I was aware of what I was feeling. So I was able to speak about it in an empowered way. Once I started speaking about it, I didn't just speak about it to with just anybody or on social media or or make a, a huge, you know, hue and cry about, you know, whatever I was feeling and or not feeling. Um, I actually spoke to people who I trust, you know, so we had conversations about what I was going through. Um, similarly, there were other uh, friends of mine who I, I still talk to. I still talk to all of you guys. So there, there's a, um, a a bunch of people who I trust, you know, so I, I, I spoke to everybody I trusted. And, uh, you know, people would then, you know, perhaps maybe seeing my vulnerability or seeing um or because maybe i was just clearly asking you know do you can do you know uh, can you advise something or do you know anybody who can help and you know so i i was either really vulnerable or maybe i was like point blank asking for help and advice um i started to get a lot of help from from people you know like i have i have friends who reached into their networks and and found people who had done um who had practiced like gone to an acupuncturist who told me who gave me feedback um or who shared numbers uh, i had friends who had gone to specific doctors or through specific like procedures like those women had undergone them you know and they they those women also even though they they didn't know me they had never seen me or met me they were so open about sharing their stories with me you know so i think um that's how how it happened because i was very very vocal with a trusted uh, you know circle of friends mm -hmm about what i was going through and what i was looking for and also i was very um i put put effort into it like i did go and and you know check out healers at least i took one consultation with them um uh, i did my own research also which is something that i would encourage everybody to do um you know don't just rely on on like one doctor or one healer you have to do your own research and when you have a combination of all of these things, you have people you trust, um, you have uh, uh, you have like a network uh, of people through these people that you trust, and then you're open-minded. You've done your own research and you're open-minded. I, I think you can really sort of start to get a sense for people, you know, and it, it's just about that. It's about having that human sense for people because a doctor, like let's say like an allopathic doctor, he might have gone to the best universities. He might have, helped like you know millions of people but ultimately you know you're you are not you're not a statistic and you should not think of yourself as a statistic you shouldn't say 
that, oh, he's helped so many people, so I'm sure he's going to help me too. It's not like that, you know. You you are an individual and you have specific needs and you have had a journey and, and everybody's values different. Too. Values too, right? Because I yeah. think when you meet people, especially healers, you're able to see if your value systems align. Yeah. If, yeah. you know, the healer is able to understand and appreciate where you come from and where you want to go. Maybe yeah. they have different views. Maybe they have different values. Maybe they have uh, different uh, experiences mm -hmm. that make them. Right. That doesn't make them bad healers. They just don't make uh, for I mean, you probably may not be a good match. Then. That's it. Yeah. Right. So I think yeah. also just knowing that each interaction builds a level of trust, you know, like a person that you resonate with makes you feel more confident and elevated. Maybe yeah. you don't know the answers to everything, but, you know, you get a sense that, OK, you know, I'm, I'm willing to, to go on this journey with this person is something that. You know, that feeling is very important, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. All right. Wonderful. So I have one last question about this. Mm -hmm. uh, have you been teaching through your entire pregnancy? Yes. Yeah. Yes, thankfully, uh, you know, nothing has uh, hindered that. Mm -hmm. I've kept a full schedule. Um, in fact, in my first trimester, uh, I would be, uh, I, I would feel okay only while I was teaching. Maybe it was because I was distracted or maybe because I was moving around so much, but that, that nausea would be, you know, at bay when I was in class. Um, and uh, so I was teaching all throughout my first trimester, despite the nausea. Um, and then, uh, you know, second trimester is just over. I kept a full schedule. I'm going to be teaching all the way till the end of March. Uh, if everything goes well, till the end of March. I really enjoy what I do. And, uh, you know, it, it gives me, it brings me a lot of joy. I don't feel like I have to go to work or I have to teach. I, it, it's something that I really enjoy. So I think um, in that way, my yoga has helped, has, uh, you know, sort of uh, worked for me also that I haven't felt like I have, I have to do this. You know, I've, I've wanted to keep teaching. I've wanted to keep studying. So uh, I've kept teaching and I'm going to teach for another, uh, I guess, two and a half months, about two and a half months. Yeah. I I mean, your enthusiasm about yoga literally jumps off the screen when you say this, you know, <laughs> like you're just so <laughs> excited by what you're doing. Uh, just a, a few curious questions about this again, because see, as a teacher, you have to be, you know, up and about and, you know, you're moving around a lot. And with a growing bump, did you feel any balance issues? Did yoga practice help you with that? Because the body changes and mm -hmm. especially when you're more sensitive to uh, your body, then you're more sensitive to the changes too. Yeah. So did you find any kind of, um, did the body as the body changed, yeah. did your mind also sort of start understanding it just parallelly or did you have to put some effort or did the practice help? How did that happen? Yeah, How did your I body mean, sense the world? I, I, uh, you know, I knew that the body was going to change. I, uh, you know, that's something I, I knew, like I've helped so many women during their prenatal, uh, during the prenatal phase and I knew I knew the body was going to change um, I think how yoga helped me was that um, I wasn't afraid or I wasn't uh, worried about this change like I knew I knew the body was going to change and I, uh, I because of the yoga practice and because of all the teachers and the healers who were guiding me um, I I didn't want to fight the change I I didn't uh, you know I wasn't uh, looking to be one of those women who who says like oh I didn't feel anything it it, it was so easy like it, I wasn't looking to be uh, to have that sort of pregnancy you know um, there is there is a lot of this um, idea uh, you know the, a lot of people have this this idea that whatever they were doing before they got pregnant they they should just continue it whatever they were doing you know but um, it th this idea never made sense to me because your body is going through so much on a hormonal level on a physical level so um so i i knew that my body was going to change and i think what helped was that i i was not looking to fight that change i was because once your 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 mind is in that mode that you know i it, nothing's happening or uh, i just have to do this or i just have to do a few more squats and you know then my lower body will be strong and then i won't feel unstable or whatever i was never in that frame of mind. I knew that the body was going to change. And that is what made me more careful, you know, so I, I 
never slipped, I never fell, I never uh, twisted or did any move which made me, f uh, which which was, um, you know, uh, con contraindicated for pregnancy. I, I ne from the first trimester uh, till now, I have never accidentally done anything because I've, I've just, I have just, I accept the fact that, you know, my body is going through so many changes and it's best to work with the body rather than work against it and try to like tell my mind to get, keep my body the, the, as it was before and all of that. So I think, um, you know, when we talk about growth, like pregnancy being a period of growth physically and emotionally and mentally, I think uh, uh, that, that mental aspect, we don't get, uh, uh, you know, we, we a lot of women who are not into holistic health and holistic healing, like they, they don't really get exposed to that, you know? So for me, yes, all of these changes were happening. Like it's not so easy. Like I'm in my third trimester now. I'm bigger than I've ever been in my life, actually. <laughs> so I don't expect to be able to get up and, and sit down with ease. Uh, I, I don't uh, demonstrate, uh, you know, like the closed twists. Like I said, there's a lot of, I spend a lot of time sitting in my class and just giving instructions, you know? And uh, I have to really say that you know my students have have been so supportive of that you know all all my students have been so supportive um they you know i sit and then they and they try their best to listen to the instructions and and do the uh do the class and it's always it's been like a teamwork you know the classes have been like a teamwork so i yeah i you know i feel the imbalance i feel the extra weight um i feel the slowness i'm, I'm not fast i'm not supposed to be fast i'm not supposed to be balanced you know i'm supposed to be working with my body just enjoying this phase and that's what how i've approached it yeah so a lot of women also have this fear that once the pregnancy is over, the body may not really go back to the way, uh, you know, the, the energy levels pre-pregnancy and yeah. you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And even then there may be some, some things that are not just the same. Do you have those fears as well? Do you, have you thought about any of this? How, how does, yeah. I mean, could you throw some light on yeah. the thought process? Yeah, I think, you know, um, prior to getting pregnant, it, it was like that, you know, um, when I was not able to conceive for, for a while, um, I remember speaking to a counselor and she said, okay, tell me what your fears are. And I, I was like, okay, maybe subconsciously I feel that, you know, I, I'm going to lose my body and not, not be able to get in shape again and just um, think about the worst case scenarios and maybe that'll happen to me. Um, so I remember, I remember very clearly I had this conversation with, with a counselor uh, and I I remember the counselor also at the time, uh, she said, well, that's very natural. Like every, all women feel that way. That's very natural to feel, but not all women, but, uh, but most women, you know, end up going back to how they used to be. Um, so I, I remember that was the first time I voiced this, uh, this kind of fear or hesitation, you know, that, that most women have, I guess maybe even all women have. Um, but I, I think again, you know, like it has been, a journey of growth and exploration for me undoubtedly it's been that you know it it can't not be um i i conceived when i was um 41 you know i i came to this journey with a certain amount of maturity um with a certain amount of understanding and i wanted to be on this journey so um yes i am you know i i yeah, yeah we, we all think about that you know how you know what if what if you're not able to get back to the pre-pregnancy weight or the way we used to look or you know stretch marks on your skin and the energy levels and will i be tied down and more responsibilities etc 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 but again i think you know my yoga the um, the holistic health practitioners that i and also my friends who are yoga teachers you know like you and so many other friends who are yoga uh, teachers or uh, alternative health practitioners we our approach to this is very different right you know we're, we're we are not trying to fight fight the change that has happened we're working with the changes that are happening and now i feel like we're going to work with the changes that we will see you know post pregnancy you know it's it's that's all it is right like that you have to work with it uh, that we'll see what happens and and i remember one of my yoga teachers said oh there's so many things we can do we'll see we'll see how it is you know so don't worry about it right now uh, although it's it's natural to worry but you know when when you have like uh, me specifically like i have been practicing yoga for so long i've been talking to these alternative health healers for for so long um i do feel a sense of empowerment and confidence that 
it might take a while, but eventually, you know, you, you can get your body and your energy levels and your mind to the state that it used to be. Um, at the same time, it is a different phase of life. You know, you, it's not just like a small uh, parenthood or motherhood is not just like a small temporary thing that you just want to experience and come out of. It's part of you. So you have to work with that. I think yoga has really taught me that, that level of flexibility, that level of empowerment, that I'll be able to handle it. Wow. Wow, that's a fantastic answer, uh, Pragya, because I think at the same time, there is so much openness and, uh, you know, your what you just said also says that there's so much hope to any change that ha happens, right? Yeah. And as long as you don't fight the change to begin with, yeah. right? As long as you're not opposed to the change, you say, yes, this is what's happening. And then you see what to do about it, right? I think mm -hmm. that that is the first step, the fear honestly keeps making everybody feel like okay okay i'm going to close my eyes nothing has changed i'm the same person and you know it's going to be all right so you know there's a lot of reassurance that we put ourselves through where we are constantly yeah. saying oh this didn't happen but the moment you say oh wait this is happening then your response is <laughs> just yeah. changed right so i think that that's a very nice way to look at it um it's been a very very nice conversation i think we're just a little um, maybe 10 minutes over time that we had planned. Uh, so next week, uh, for all of those who have joined in, next week we continue this conversation and we talk about hormones and yoga and, you know, generally what are the things to look out for. If you have any questions about this entire thing for Pragya, please DM us. Uh, please share this conversation with anybody who may really need it because there are so many aspects of this journey that is not spoken about this way, right? Nobody talks about the finer, the softer paths, the softer power of yoga mm -hmm. in this entire journey. Everybody is talking about, you know, Sukta Vata Konasana is something and, you know, this is something. Yeah. Asanas, is, I'm not, while I'm not trying to dismiss the effect that the physical practice has, I think this entire perspective and this entire frame of mind and the open openness and generally the acceptance of everything is very important for people going through this journey. So thank you so much. Uh, it was wonderful talking to you. Um, thank you, Meera. See you next week, 11.30. Next week. Yeah. Bye -bye. See you then. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye, guys.